first up is huge news from Anthropic. So the company has unveiled major upgrades to its AI models. There's an enhanced Claude 3.5 Sonnet, a new Claude 3.5 Haiku model. And importantly, they announced the capability for Claude to use computers. That means Claude through the API can operate computers like humans do. So control cursors, click buttons, type text. This is a public beta feature right now, but it basically marks the first kind of over time a frontier AI model can go directly interact with computer interfaces. Now Claude, also, or Anthropic rather, also introduced for Claude an analysis tool. So this functions as like a built-in code sandbox where Claude can perform complex mathematical operations, analyze data sets, and iterate through different analytical approaches before providing answers. So you can think of this a bit like code interpreter in ChatGPT. You know, it can not only write and execute code right within this feature, but it also can be used, for instance, by marketing teams to analyze customer funnel data or performance data. Sales teams can also look at their own data. Finance teams can create dashboards. All these kind of data analysis use cases and tasks that you would typically be thinking of trying to do in something like ChatGPT's code interpreter capability. Third up, OpenAI is reportedly ramping up its focus on AI-powered software development tools in response to growing competition from Anthropic. So ChatGPT's ability to write code has been kind of a big feature of the tool's success. But recent developments suggest Anthropic's Claude may be gaining an edge in coding performance by some metrics. And this has OpenAI paying attention because reports came out this week that they're developing several new coding-focused products, including tools to integrate with popular code editors like Microsoft's Visual Studio Code and more ambitious features that could automate complex software engineering tasks that humans typically take a long time to complete. Fourth up, Perplexity CEO Arvind Srinivas announced on X that Perplexity Pro, the advanced paid plan of Perplexity, is, quote, transitioning to a reasoning-powered search agent for harder queries that involve several minutes of browsing and workflows. So, for instance, he writes that Perplexity Pro will now automatically turn on when it detects this feature, when it detects really difficult prompts. So... Some examples he cites, something like, quote, pull me all the IMO, International Mathematics Olympiad, I believe is what that stands for, IMO medal winners from China in the last five years and give it to me as a table. Quote, read Warren Buffett's shareholder letters and tell me the key highlights from each year. So getting much more beyond just finding you information and actually reasoning through it. Fifth up, we're not even close to being done yet, <laughs> run by has unveiled Act One. So Runway has come out with what they're calling Act One, a groundbreaking new AI tool that basically transforms how animated character performances can be created. This technology allows creators to generate expressive character animations using nothing more than simple video inputs. So this dramatically simplifies what has traditionally been a complex equipment heavy process. So unlike conventional animation pipelines that require Extensive motion capturing equipment, multiple camera setups, manual face rigging. Act One can create compelling animations from a single camera recording an actor's performance. So it accurately captures and translates subtle details like eye movements, micro expressions, and timing from the source footage to the animated character. So if you are in any type of design or animation, keep an eye on that one. Number six, Eleven Labs has launched Voice Design. This is a new AI-powered tool that allows users to generate custom voices simply by describing them in text. The system enables creators to specify characteristics like age, accent, gender, tone, and pitch. It also offers particular utility for commercial applications. Think video voiceovers, ad reads, maybe even podcasts. And users will be able to either create new voices from descriptions or clone existing ones and tweak those as they need. Number seven, Stability AI, which we haven't heard from in a while, 
has unveiled stable for, uh, who's the titanic guy james cameron that just oh, joined yes, the board yes I okay that was on the that, last piece we, of news we haven't yeah. talked models with them lately yeah i wasn't even aware they were still working on them but good for them they've unveiled stable diffusion 3.5 their most powerful image generation model to date this includes stable diffusion 3.5 large an 8 billion parameter model optimized for professional use and there's also a faster version that can generate high quality images in just four steps. All right, almost done here, but kind of wrapping up some of these updates, there are a few really big rumors flying around. So The Verge, for instance, is reporting that OpenAI is preparing to launch its next frontier AI model, codenamed Orion, by December basically would put it right around chat gpt's two-year anniversary now this rumor has some controversy with it because while the verge is kind of reporting things like the model is rumored to be substantially more powerful than its predecessors including one open ai executive apparently suggesting it could be a hundred times more capable than gpt4 OpenAI CEO Sam Alton <laughs> pretty quickly responded to this article on X calling it, quote, fake news. And a company spokesperson clarifies that they do not plan to release a model named Orion this year, though they do plan to release, quote, other great technology. At the same time, Google is reportedly planning to release Gemini 2.0, its next major AI model, in December. However, some sources close to it claim that the new Gemini model is not exactly delivering the performance improvements that the DeepMind team had initially hoped to achieve. However, along with that, the information reports that Google is also reportedly developing an AI system codenamed Project Jarvis. This can take control of a user's web browser to complete everyday tasks. They are planning to preview a com this computer using agent alongside the Gemini model release in December, according to these rumors. And unlike Anthropic's kind of computer using agent, which is more for kind of professional users through their API and operating different applications, Jarvis is specifically designed apparently for consumer use in the Chrome browser. It is being developed to help handle common web-based tasks like online shopping, travel booking, and research gathering. Okay, Paul, that is a whole week's worth of AI news in one topic. Zooming out here, which of these trends or announcements or rumors are most worth paying attention to right now? First, I just want to like comment on the, the Jarvis name. We got, we got it. We got a little more creative here. I mean, so Zuckerberg a couple of years ago was building Jarvis. He wanted to build his own like in-house assistant personally. He called it Jarvis. If I'm not mistaken, Jasper's original name was Jarvis and they was, got a yes. threatening letter to stop using that name. Google's now codenaming Jarvis. I mean, I don't know, just it's going to be more creative. Um, we'll be at AGI when like the AI can help us come up with more creative uh, right. names for projects and brands, I think. <laughs> All right. So. I, I want to, that was a lot. Um, and again, as the week was going on and Mike and I are kind of like keeping track of all this, like, how are we even going to like cover all of this and, and do it justice in a single episode? But I, I think Mike just gave a really great rundown. And, and what I want to do is try and add a little context because I saw some people when specifically with the Claude, the Anthropic Claude news and the computer use, mm. I saw a lot of stuff online where it was kind of like hyping it up. And, and I just want to make sure people understand the context that we're, we're not there yet. This is very, very early. Um, so we just need to pump the brakes a little bit on our excitement around computer use. It's a very dangerous technology. It is, um, mm -hmm. it is likely not going to see rapid adoption. I think it's going to be a while before people find really valuable use cases that aren't very specifically trained to do um, exact things. And so I just wanted to kind of, again, add some historical context here. So this idea of a machine, an AI model, being able to see what's happening on your screen and then take action, that, that concept goes back quite a ways. So we talked about this world of bits research. This is going back to, gosh, Mike, I, this might've been episode like 
35 or something like that. Yeah, It was yeah. February of 23, I think. So almost a year and a half ago, we talked about this. So Andres Karpathy, who we've talked about many, many times on the podcast, he, um, he was at OpenAI, um, one of the founding members of OpenAI. He left and went and ran computer vision and full self-driving development at Tesla for five years, went back to OpenAI. So in his original stint at OpenAI in like 2016, 2017, he was working on this concept called World of Bits. So World of Atoms is us humans in, our, in the real world. Um, world of Bits is the digital world, basically. And their premise was they could build these web-based agents that could fill out forms, you know, click around your mouse, um, use your keyboard the way you would. And that if we could give these agents that capability, like imagine the, the world that opens up to what these AI models can do if they can take actions on our screens the way we do. And more specifically, if they can generally learn. Mm. So if like you and I go to any web page, we can figure out what to do at it. There's slider scales, there's forms to fill out, there's buttons to click, but you kind of get it. It's the same interface on different pages. That's not how AI has historically worked. Like you could imagine training an AI to do a specific form, like let's say tax returns. You could train an AI agent to do tax returns in a very specific way, but you couldn't take this general agent and drop it in to a tax return page and, and have it fill that out and then go over to a survey and fill out a survey and like go over to another one and interact with games. That's not how these were work, but that was the theory back in 2016, 17 is that we could do this. Now, the world of bits research at OpenAI ran into some technological barriers. What ended up happening, though, is the story we told on the podcast back in February 23, was that Andres Karpathy went back to OpenAI in yeah. early 2023. So that was the time when we kind of like started talking about it because large language models unlocked this ability to build these web-based web -based agents. Because what they realized is once the, the model could understand the language, it could actually be trained to do this computer use model where it could learn how to use keyboards and mice. So this isn't new stuff. Like this has been going on for probably over a decade. They've been working on this technology. Google is working on it. OpenAI is working on it. I, I'm sure the others, Meta, I, I guarantee you Meta is working on it. We haven't heard about theirs, but there's no way they're not working on it too. So Anthropic, oddly enough, the, the, the frontier model company that's supposed to be focused on responsible AI more than all others is the one that came to market with a tool that it is not safe. So I, I, it's, it's wild. So I want, I want to like focus in on what they're doing. And we'll put the link to the world of bits stuff in the show notes, just so people can follow along. But Anthropic published a couple of posts related to this. So. In essence, they kind of walk through, like, here's how it works. It sees your screen. It's able to interact um, with what's happening. And basically, it's taking, like, screenshots of your screen. And and then it's able to kind of interpret what's happening on the, the scene, on the screen. It says, Claude looks at screenshots of what's visible to the user, then counts how many pixels, vertically or horizontally, it needs to move a cursor in order to click in the correct place. So that's how rudimentary this is. It's counting mm. pixels. Um, and so again, you can hear this web-based agents taking actions and you think like it's seeing and doing like a human, but that's not how they really work. It, then they said for safety reasons, we did not allow the model to access the internet during training. This is your first kind of clue that this isn't fully baked technology. Um, they turn a user's written prompt into a sequence of logical steps and then take actions on the computer. So it's using kind of like that reasoning model where it's going through these different steps. We observed that the model would even self-correct and retry tasks when encountering obstacles. So like, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. Then they do their own valuation, which they created to test these capabilities. And Claude currently gets 14.9%. I, I don't know if that's like an accuracy thing, like of actions correct. Um, human level is 70 to 75%. So this thing is nowhere near human right. level, but the previous best was 7.7%. So then they go into making it safe. And this is the part where I, I just like, again, I'm kind of surprised it's, it's Anthropic doing this. Um, so we found that Claude 3.5 Sonnet, including its new computer use skill, remains at AI safety level two. We've talked about their responsible AI levels on previous episodes. Here's where it gets interesting though. We judge that it's likely better to introduce computer use now while models still only need AI safety level two safeguards. Now keep in mind, Dario Amade, their CEO himself 
suggested that we will be at level three concerns by next year. Mm. So it's not like we have a couple of years to figure this out. They're like throwing this out into the world and then it's figured out. So then it says, this means we can begin grappling with any safety issues before the stakes are too high, rather than adding computer use capabilities for the first time into a model, which m with much more serious tasks. There's also the potential for users to intentionally misuse Claude's computer skills, which we've actually already seen people kind of jailbreaking it online and using yeah. it to do things it wasn't <laughs> supposed to do. Our teams have developed classifiers and other methods to flag and mitigate these kinds of abuses. Again, really important for people to understand this. These models come out, they have all kinds of capabilities that are turned off, quote unquote, turned off for us users. And the way they do that is by creating these classifiers that identify when a user is trying to do something the model's not supposed to do. And so they specifically say in the next paragraph, we've put in place measures to monitor when Claude is asked to engage in election related activity, as well as systems for nudging Claude away from activities like generating and posting content on social media, registering web domains or interacting with government websites. So they are not saying it can't do those things. They're actually implying it can, we just don't want it to because it's not safe enough yet. Then they have a readme warning and get this, like, so it's telling people that want to use this model. Um, this is a beta feature. Please be aware it poses unique risks. Uh, and then they go into specifically to minimize these risks, consider taking these precautions when using this model, use a dedicated virtual machine or container with minimal privileges to prevent direct system attacks or accidents, avoid giving it access to sensitive data, such as account login information to prevent information theft, limit internet access to an allow list of domains to reduce exposure to malicious content and ask a human to confirm decisions that may result in meaningful real world consequences. Again. It's able to do those things. They're just telling you, please don't do them. And we've built some classifiers to try and stop you from doing them. Mm -hmm. They then go on to say, um, it is slow and air prone. And here's, I, I, this is kind of funny, but it's dem uh, like demonstrates the issues here. Even while we were recording demonstrations of computer use for today's launch, we encountered some amusing errors. I like how they word this. In one, Claude accidentally clicked to stop a long-running screen recording, causing all footage to be lost. In another, Claude suddenly took a break from our coding demo and began to peruse photos of Yellowstone National Park. So if uh, the whole point of this is, if you're seeing people in your social network that are claiming that this is like some really advanced stuff and they changed the game. People's favorite thing to say, it changes mm -hmm. the game. It hasn't changed anything yet. But like, this is, this is research being done in a public beta that developers can play around with if they have access to the API. It is not something that a business leader or a marketer or an accountant or a lawyer two months from now is going to be using. You do not want these things having access to your logins and right. accounts. <laughs> okay, so that's my cloud take. Perplexity, interesting. Um, so what you mentioned about them saying it'll automatically turn on the reasoning capabilities for hard prompts, it just reminded me that this is what we've talked about. I think the way that all these systems are gonna work, whether you're in uh, Anthropic or Google Gemini or ChatGPT, um, or Salesforce or HubSpot, whatever, anywhere where these like agents work, these different models, I really think we're, we're going to very quickly get to a point where we run into the system choosing the best model for you. It, mm. it still makes no, like, it's like Chad GPT is built for developers still because there's like six models to choose from when you go in there. Perplexity is the same way. You can pick from any of like eight models. How the hell am I supposed to know which model to pick? Like, I don't, I, they, you can't even click on them and learn which one is better than the other for different things. So I think that the way they're going is the way these will all go. Well, we're just going to interact with ChatGPT. You're not going to care what model version it is or whatever. It's just ChatGPT. Mm. And, and it'll pick the things and be the sort of symphony of models. Um, on the Google stuff, obviously, it's just rumors. It's just a couple of articles from the information in The Verge talking about different things coming. I would not be surprised at all if Gemini 2 dropped. I've always assumed Gemini 2 was coming this year. December seems like a logical timeline, early December in particular. Um, computer use, hundred percent. They've been working on that for a long time. It's interesting that it would be, you know, the Anthropic doesn't obviously have the distribution Google does. If Google finds a way to integrate computer use into the Chrome browser, right, which is the right. dominant browser, 
distribution is an interesting thing. And then the, the final note is just on open AI, as you mentioned, something is coming. I mean, Sam does his vague tweeting and he actually <laughs> tweeted on what day was this? Um, October 21st, he said, uh, whoa, ChatGPT's second birthday is the next month. What should we give it as a birthday present? And that was a few days before the article talking about Orion coming out. So Orion. they're absolutely coming out something. They probably won't call it Orion. So they're easy to say like, yeah, we're not launching Orion, but who knows what we're going to get from them. But it's my guess is O one one for sure. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to move beyond the preview and you're going to have the reasoning engine and you're probably going to have. I, I, they got to release Sora sometime this year, right? Like, I, I feel like they've, they just got to do that. Yeah. I think Sora is either this year or early next, maybe yeah. because they had to delay it, uh, or retrain it at one point. But yeah, I think there people are, there's some pressure on to release yeah. some stuff, especially with the delay of voice mode, yeah. you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. We didn't even hear from Meta in this update, like Meta's yeah. coming, uh, XAI this morning announced, um, that uh, you can now upload images to it or it can see and understand images. Uh, th there's just, it's going to be a very busy November and December. There, there is uh, a lot more coming in the next two months. So stay tuned. It's pretty funny because the term AI winter is such a popular term to <laughs> note these cycles, macro yeah. cycles in AI where years will happen, where, you know, funding dries up. But I think we're getting an AI winter of a totally yeah, different, different sort. Is it a different meaning? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Certainly an AI fall. We'll see if it, yeah. if it extends into the winter.